Hi, Becca C. Smith here, and in this video, I am doing a collab with Cachet Warren and Kate Cavanaugh, where we are going to watch N.K. Jemison's masterclass. Oh my God, I am so excited because I am the biggest fan of N.K. Jemison. Thanks to Cachet Warren, she is the one who introduced me to her. And now, of course, I've gone down the rabbit hole and reading everything that she's ever written. Um, but she started me out with the Broken Earth trilogy, and it, I, it, I, it changed my life. Like I, it is absolutely my favorite trilogy of all time. After I read that, I remember I texted Cache and told her that I just finished. And so she wanted to talk about it. And I remember having to tell her, I, I can't talk. Like I was wrecked. I was broken. I couldn't talk about it. Like that's how much these books affected me that I couldn't even think about it couldn't even think about that ending without breaking into tears. I mean, even I, I'm just, I'm breaking into tears just thinking about thinking about it. <laughs> it's amazing. And N.K. Jemison is amazing. Okay, I didn't mean for this to get emotional, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm so excited to be taking this class if you haven't figured it out. I'm about to dive into Kilkeo Peak. Now I've been reading fantasies my entire life but I have been too scared to write one. I don't know why. To be fair, all my books are categorized as sci-fi fantasy, but they're more like near future or, you know, they're like an alternate earth or, you know, they're still kind of based on earth. You know, I, I do world, I do world building and things like that. Of course, you know, it's a definitely different world. So there is a fantasy aspect of it. Absolutely. But I still have a safety net. <laughs> of earth <laughs> so that's why i think i'm scared with kokeo peak because this is a different planet it's a different world different species different everything this is why i've always been intimidated because when i read fantasy even if it is a different planet they do have things that are still called the same things like you know even something like a fork or <laughs> or a bowl or, you know, or an animal, like we went hunting for deer, you know, and you're thinking, are there deer in this world? They do have made up animals and made up trees and made up things. So it's a mixture of both. And that's the sort of balance I get intimidated by. Like, do I make everything completely fantasy where everything is different because everything would be different because it's a different planet? You know, I just, I get into my head. So what I'm hoping that this masterclass does is that it'll help me get out of my head, see how she does it. Because I've been looking through the courses and a lot of them are world building and from the magic system to the culture, to the religion, she's got it all. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down. It's about four hours, so I don't know if I'll be doing it in all in one sitting. It is broken down into chunks. So I'll probably be doing it over the next couple of days just watching each episode at a time. But knowing me, I'll probably watch the whole thing right now. But I'm telling myself that I'm allowing myself to just kind of take it a chunk at a time because I've got my keyboard right here. It's hooked up to my monitor, my laptop, and I will be making lots of notes. Okay, I'm so excited. Here I go. Let's start with the end of the world, why don't we? Get it over with and move on to more interesting things. Those first two sentences introduce the fact that the end of the world is happening, which I think of as a really important inciting incident. Okay, I'm already watching the intro and I was I I was bawling. <laughs> I don't know. I just I I it's just emotional for me. I I, I don't know why I'm crazy. But then she totally made me laugh because there's a, a section where she said she had a mini midlife crisis at 30. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're the exact same age. And and she, and then right after I laughed, she said, anybody over 30 is laughing right now. <laughs> well, like, because of course you always do have that at 30. Every, every person, even people our age, almost 50, you, you do have that moment at 30 where you, you're, you're kind of thinking like, what, what, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? What am I doing? It was so funny that she said, she literally said, the idea of a midlife crisis at 30 is hilarious. And it is, 
but it's not to take away from the fact that you still have them at 30. You have them in your 20s, for God's sake. You know what I mean? So it's it was just funny that I laughed, and then she said, anyone over 30 is laughing. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm already in. I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. She's talking about world building. I'm on the first episode, The Elements. And she was saying that in one of her books that she kind of based it after ancient Egypt. And one of the things she had to figure out is the minutia, which is very important because that is key. That's the thing that I feel like I'm missing. So I definitely need to get into that. And, and she was bringing up the thing about like, how did ancient Egyptians go to the bathroom? You know, something like that. Just things that you don't even think about. But what's funny is that with Kilkeo Peak, I feel like every fantasy I've read that's sort of like that high fantasy, you know, you think of like Lord of the Rings and like that kind of thing, there's no plumbing. You know what I mean? It's always like pots, you know, and things like that where they go to the bathroom or outhouses and things like that. And so it's funny that she brought that up because that was something I was thinking about with Kilkeo Peak is that I was like, you know, there could be plumbing. Like that does just because it's a high fantasy doesn't mean that they weren't inventive enough to come up with plumbing, right? If I'm weird, but it's like, it's like I've read so much fantasy and you don't think about it, but it is always like either, it's always chamber pots and, and outhouses and things like that. Like fantasy automatically equals the past for that genre. I don't know why. Just so you guys know, there's plumbing in Kilkeo Peak. <laughs> and this actually is really helping because these are the little things that you need to think about because they're like what she said, are gonna make your world feel lived in. I loved that phraseology, lived in, because that's what you want. You don't want it to feel like this brand new world that you just invented like this. You want it to feel like people have been there for a long time. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm enjoying this, okay. Okay, she was talking about how she uh, published the seasons at the end and the appendices at, at the end of uh, Broken Earth Trilogy, which is one of actually my favorite parts, reading about all the seasons of the past. But then she literally just said there were about 20 that she didn't publish and I'm now dying to know what they are because I love that stuff. I love the world building and I love that she said, just have fun with it because that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to put myself like when I was a kid and I was pretty much obsessed with the fact that I was going to find the door to Narnia. And I'm trying to get myself into that same mindset of where, you know, when we'd pretend that we would find the door, my friends and I, you know, and, and that we were like, whoa, where are we? We're in Narnia, you know? And you're completely immersing yourself and pretending that your backyard is Narnia. And oh my God, we found it, we found it. And I really want to capture that feeling that I felt back then um, while I'm world building. And, and, and so far I've been able to do that. So I'm just, anyway, this is making me so excited. <laughs> I wanna get started on Kill Kill Beat now. <laughs> Okay, she brought up this really good point, which is what I think I do, and I need to pull it back, is that she says that sometimes you get so much into your head or into your world that you kind of feel like everything is important, like everything in the world is important, and you need to rein it back because you're just going to flood the reader with so much information. The stuff that you find interesting and cool and fun is just not gonna be heard. They're not gonna care because it's just a bunch of words. If you suffer for your art, that doesn't mean your audience has to as well. <laughs> oh my God, that's the best quote. <laughs> that literally sums it up so well because she's, you know, she's basically saying like, yes, you put in all this work and I, I know you want to show it off, but and show like, look what I did. Look how much time I spent on this. You as the writer can suffer, but, but do not make your reader suffer. Oh my God, I love her. Okay, this is the part that's really, really good is she breaks down when she does world building she does it in macro world building and micro world building i'm on the macro world building class and this is really important because this is exactly what i need 
for my book. This is really good because I was so overwhelmed and now she's breaking it down for me in a way that I feel like I can handle it. Like I feel like I've already done a good job of kind of putting in the pieces, but now she's she's like giving me the tools to be able to really finesse what I have and add to it and and create an even more dynamic setting down to like the weather or the seismic activity, you know, things like that that I hadn't really considered. Oh my God, so this is really, really helping. We're actually doing an exercise, I'm so excited. Okay, so this is actually, this is my Kilkeo Peak journal. I've been designing the clothes of the, the characters, I've been doing powers. I mean, I have so much stuff in here. I, I don't know why I didn't put it in a row, but I literally have the, the magic systems, everything. So all, everything that is Kilkeo Peak is, is pretty much in here, but I have a lot of blank pages. This exercise is about creating the actual world, like the planet. Like I've created the world as in how it interacts with humans and dragons and, and people and everything like that. But she's talking about like, the planet. I'm putting up my Scrivener file too because I have my map. I have, I literally have a, a document too, which is the breakdown of the cities and the towns and the prime cities and the, the different countries. And then I have how many moons, how many rivers, how many. So I have all of that, the oceans, all of that stuff. Three moons, three suns, they all have names, but she's actually talking about the planet. So I am going to do this exercise. My planet, Rencarta, is just one big land mass, and then the rest is, is water and ocean. And But I never thought about the hemispheres, so it would make a difference. And, and now, now that I think about that land mass that I've just always, you know, kind of thought about as another map that you see in a fantasy book. You don't think about the climate, the, you know, how, what would that mean? Like this part of the hemisphere and the other part of the hemisphere, is it warmer on the Southern side? Is it, you know, is it warmer on the Northern side? Like, I mean, do you do the opposites? Where is it in context with the three suns? You know, is it, is it, does it make a difference in terms of vegetation of, oh my God, all these things. Like I just put forests anywhere when I was doing the map, which is fine. I can still make that work, but I didn't put the thought into it that I think that she's now bringing up, which, you know, seems very logical, but I just, I needed to hear it in a way that clicked for me. And this really does click. That was really good. I just finished the first micro world building lesson. I'm about to go into the next micro world building lesson, but it, it's good because it actually brought up a lot of questions that I hadn't really considered from like resources and trade routes to even something simple like curse words. She brought up a really good point that in certain societies and cultures, for example, was if there were water people, so then the curse words would probably revolve around the sun, things that water people wouldn't like. <laughs> uh, sand, something like that. I don't have any of that. You know, I have the basics of my world, which I'm happy about, like the magic system and things like that, and and you know, the different land, and, and but, but these are the, the minutia and the details that it's not that I hadn't thought of them, but because I'm, I'm so focused on the characters and the story, I just, I, well, I, I didn't think of them actually, you know? I just didn't, because I didn't feel like they were important to the story, but they are. So it's interesting, like, even if I don't have to blatantly say it, I need to know it. And I think that's what her main point is. It's like, you don't have to share it all, but you do have to do the work and know what it is. What's interesting, she's talking about how when she was getting sort of into the mindset of Broken Earth Trilogy, she actually took a trip to Hawaii to, to know what it feels like to, to, to what a volcano smells like, looks like, feels like. It's interesting because I am also obsessed with volcanoes, hence Kilkeo Peak. I mean, it's a volcano. And it just made me realize that a part of that is because when I was a kid, you know, I grew up in 
Seattle and I remember when Mount St. Helens blew. Now it wasn't lava, it was just ash, but it was a big deal. And I remember I remember we could see it from our house and you know, it, it looked like a mushroom cloud. And in, let's face it, in the early 80s, late 70s, there was a lot, uh, as a kid I remember, there was a, uh, we would have uh, nuclear bomb drills where we'd get under our desk, like that would help. And, uh, but it was very scary. I remember as a kid being very scared that, that, that a bomb would be dropped at any point. And when Mount St. Helens blew, it looked like what I had seen in all the movies and things that we had been shown at school and pictures. So I thought it had happened. And I remember that terror. And I, I was with my friend at my house and we just hid under the coffee table uh, waiting until we realized, you know, one of our parents came home and stuff, that it, it was uh, Mount St. Helens. And it's interesting because that's such a pivotal part of my life that it, 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 it to me, it just, I, I just made the comparison, like as she was talking about that, the smells, the sounds, the, you know, what I saw, and how much that obviously made an impact that, the, that it happens to be the first fantasy, full fantasy book that I'm writing, the central part of it is a volcano. So I don't know. I don't even know why I'm bringing this up, but it really, it just, I don't know the way, it's just, I love that she did that. I love that she went to Hawaii to know what it would feel like to see it. To, to And I'm like that too, I, that immersion that I was talking about before. I really... That's what I love. That's what I love reading. That's what I love writing. I just love it when I, I'm i completely immersed, whether that be in someone else's story or my own. Oh my God, she's bringing up Mount St. Helens in the next video. How crazy is that? I was just talking about my experience and then she's like, like Mount St. Helens. And I'm like, a video later. Oh, wow. I swear I didn't see this video first. <laughs> That's so crazy. Oh my God, I love the serendipity. I feel so connected. I feel so connected. Oh my God, like she's literally watching the videos. I was just talking about. Of how dark the sky got. And, yes. Uh, when the ash was falling and what ash fall looked like. Yeah, I actually have ash. I could I could show her the ash. I still have it from Mount St. Helens. It was like snow. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. I'm on the psychology of characters now. And she talks about how her characters come to her in dreams sometimes. And same, like, I have gotten some of my best ideas from my dreams. I mean, hence, the Dream Diaries. I have a whole series about a character that has psychic dreams. But, oh, it's so cool. It's so cool to see someone else that kind of can get just maybe the seedling of a character or an idea from dreams themselves. I mean, it's it's why I have a dream journal because you just never know. Even that weird freaking dream that you think means nothing and you have no idea why you had it and then you end up taking a piece of it and putting it in your book. <laughs> cool, I love it. She actually has her own triangle diagram of characterization for a character. So I am writing it down and I'm going to try to apply it and fill and kind of fill it out, you know, briefly for all of my main characters and side characters and see what comes up. It's just that hierarchy of what's, you know, physically important to what's internally important to each character and I feel like that's definitely what I get attracted to when I'm when I'm reading a book or what I connect with. So this is just all gold, all gold. I have so much to work on now <laughs> for Kilkeo Peak and actually for Hexphere a little bit too, because I, I, you know, I finished my rough draft, but now I'm going to be diving into my second draft, and I, I think I'm going to use a lot of this at least for the character building. 
Um, I really liked the diagram she came up with and just coming up with one sentence for each, you know, just to give you a quick idea of who the character is, what their arcs are externally, internally. I really do love that. So I'm, I'm definitely going to do that and I'm, I'm going to be using the world building. The last three classes are about seeking publication, how to find a literary agent, and surviving the literary marketplace. I'm gonna watch them because, you know, I'm, I'm actually very curious as what she has to say about that. Even though, um, I mean, if you, if you watch my channel, you know I'm, I'm indie published, so it probably won't apply to me in that sense because I've already decided which path I'm going on. Like, I'm not, I'm not looking for an agent. Um, I'm not looking to get traditionally published. I am so grateful for this course because I really believe it's gonna make Kilkeo Peak a better book. It's gonna make Hexfear a better book. It's gonna make all my books better books, but I think it's definitely what I needed to get over whatever was holding me back with this fantasy, whether it was my own fears or just feeling overwhelmed because, you know, creating an entirely different planet. I definitely feel like now I have a plan that I can follow. So I am so grateful for that. I am so grateful. I mean, I loved her before watching this masterclass, but I, I didn't think I could love her more. <laughs> but oh my God, she's just amazing. I, I am just so glad that I took this course. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the last three classes and see what she has to say about publication. I finished, that was amazing. Um, she actually gave some really good tips on that last video of how to protect yourself. <laughs> I love how she says, you know, plan on being famous and huge, you know, and that you really need to protect yourself. She was talking about some personal experiences she had from crazy people sending her hate mail and things like that. So that's actually really helpful. But oh my gosh, four hours later, I feel <laughs> I feel really excited. Like I, I think I'm gonna dive straight into Kilkeo Peak. A lot of those world building techniques and character building techniques, I'm just going to dive straight into. Because I do have a lot of it figured out, but those very specific details and minutia, ah, oh, I feel like it's just gonna bring it to that next level. So this class was so worth it. <laughs> I am so curious to see how it goes for Cache and Kate. I can't wait to see their videos and how they respond to the class as well. Oh my gosh, so worth it. So if you were on the bubble of whether or not to take a master class or whether or not to take this specific master class, take it. It is amazing and I, I one trillion percent believe that by watching it, it will make Kilkeo Peak a better book. Like, no doubt in my mind, I am going to be using some of these methods for sure. <gasps> ah! Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!